Welcome back everyone. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more about the actual strategy. About the actual strategy. I don't have a script for it, so I'm just going to be ranting a little bit, you know. I hope it's, you're going to have find this helpful. Today's topic is early map control. It's something that I feel like in ranked is missing a lot in a, in a lot of the games that I'm playing. Even at Immortal 3, Low Radiant. Like, people don't understand the concept of getting a lot of early map control or denying map control. Or how people are getting map control as your opponents. So we're going to jump straight into Valorplant and we're going to talk about Fracture. I, I put in it like, a, like an example of what could actually happen in a game at the beginning of the round, right? At the beginning of the round where uh, we had like the old meta game uh, lineup of Sage, Chamber, uh, Race Breach, Brimson here. Typically what you could see that a Sage is just defaulting on the walling arcade here, as you can see, and denying space. So what does this do? This creates something that is very similar to the Chamber Trap, right? It creates certainty for the defender that there's no one crossing. And if no one is crossing, people can over-rotate. And what happens typically in ranked, when a setup like this would have been used by an opponent? Let's say this is what happens. Like, um, Chamber is peeking out a main at the beginning of the round when the barrier drops. So is Raze, and the Breach stuns probably, like, um, you know, stuns... Stuns here, we have the stun over here, then we have a, a paint shells being thrown uh, onto this location, right? And then those two players are posted here. If there's no one pushing out, those two players will most likely rotate towards B, while the trap and the chamber are essentially now holding this entire area. So both, both lanes that are now um, uh, visible on, on the A side here, are fully controlled by one player. And they over-rotate because of that. So now we're going to have a stack on B side. And the players attacking it are like just pushing into essentially a trap. Because the pressure that was being done by the breach and the raise and the chamber just completely demolished the early map control from the attackers. The same can happen with the Sage Wall if it's not destroyed. If it's an A push and the Sage Wall is not destroyed, then one player can just stay as an anchor on B, while the other one can over-rotate and bolster the defenses on the A side. That's why it's so important. It's so important to understand that as an attacker, there are micro-objectives that are helping you amass map control or deny certainty of map control for the defenders right that's why for example when i play yoru i'm just doing that as an example not saying that you should be playing yoru or something don't misunderstand me i'm setting up a clone at dish it has a lineup that when activated with without guns and with just like empty hands and it's fast enough it will travel this entire distance till this spot so it activates any traps that will have on its way. So if the trap is destroyed, because of that there's like an alarm about triggered, or cypher trap, or the chamber trap, uh, we cleared essentially one map control lane uh, controlled by the opponents, one, one lane controlled by the opponents, just by using one piece of utility, right? What do you do with the sage wall? Just shoot it. Or the second option, which requires a little bit of communications and planning, something that you typically don't see in ranked, is waiting it out. For example, if this setup happens in a pistol round, there's a very small chance you're gonna destroy the sage wall. Let's even say, okay, let's 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 just say this is a potential pistol round, and um, our Astra and Neon are, are attacking Arcade, and there are three players going going B main. When those players are gonna push onto site and the jet will dash in, those two players on arcade, they're gonna be like maybe halfway destroying the wall on pistol round because it has so much HP, right? You can wait it out. It has a 35 second marker, so you can wait out till that wall dissipates and that frees up the spot for you. And that's when you can execute because the opponent loses the map control, right? There's a lot of stuff like this that just requires basic understanding of what your opponent is trying to achieve and how you can counter it, right? 
And by defaulting to those solutions, you can increase the win rate of your own rounds. But it requires A. Understanding the micro objectives, B. Communicating with your teammates of what you're trying to achieve as well, what you're trying to counter. There's another very good example um, on Ascent, also like an old, older metagame setup, right? But typically, what you, what you have seen on Ascent is where Sage is playing on A side, walls up, the same purpose as on Fracture, to deny the early map control for the opponents while amassing map control for yourself, then rotating towards short so two players are peeking out of short and either getting kills in a trade or just you know, making sure no one is mid and you have now so much map control because you are certain that no one is at A main as well. And the Chamber Trap, literally the same thing that happens on Fracture with the Dish Trap. Gives you, again, certainty of lack of rotations, sorry, of lack of uh, pushes from the attackers and makes you guaranteed to over-rotate without being punished, right? So, in this case, when a wall is being used on A side, you're going to have a stack on short and a stack on B, because no one is going to be holding this. A very easy solution to this is using a shock dart. If you're a silver player, using a shock dart for pizza every round is a very good solution. Even if there's no trap at the beginning of the round at pizza, you should be using that just to make certain that you did your job. You try doing your job so you can have like a, you know, early start of the round. You're playing Sova. You have a lineup from this spot. You have a lineup from this spot. You have a lineup from this spot every round. So whenever you go, you'll be ready to destroy the trap on that spot on market. And because of that, free up the space for you as attackers. That is so important to understand. And yet it's so underutilized, but not only in ranked. I was actually raging when I was on broadcast at VCT EMEA, how many times we were playing Ascent and literally not a single team had lineups to destroy the market market uh, pieces. If I'm not mistaken, the only team that I have seen in the previous season that was using lineups to destroy uh, the traps consistently enough was um, OG. OG London United, if I'm not mistaken, I remember we're using some lineups to destroy it. But now it's actually changed, right? Because now more characters can destroy that piece of utility as well. We have mollies who will destroy traps. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bugs with it. Uh, if you guys were watching the latest, um, the latest lab episodes, I was touching on that subject with Kijo Lockdown not being destroyable by mollies and so on. And there are traps as well um where where they're gonna not gonna be destroyed by the damage but i can't remember on top of my head what was bugged but there's a for sure bug with the fact that when you put a molly and the molly is still active and you put a trap over the molly but after it popped then it doesn't get destroyed because the damage doesn't get registered or something like that but it, point in case everything that you try to achieve should be by understanding what is the goal of your opponent's composition and their utility pieces pieces and how can you counter that by using your own utility pieces and if you just leave it unbroken they're doing their job you're not doing your job and because of that all the oh, let's let's push b as five huh? Huh? is not going to be successful a lot because suddenly your, let's assume this is going to be a proper push, so just four players and one player is controlling mid, those four players are going to go into a trap of three players, where defenders probably have a huge advantage with the way they're just going to hold angles and crossfire, and you're going into the unknown. So you're not gaining anything by having the numbers advantage, because you're going into a stack, because the opponents are knowledgeable about the map control and can read what is going to happen in the next few Minutes, minutes, few seconds, what have, right? They can amass the certainty of the positioning of the players because right now, if with, with a position like this, they can guess that it's most likely a B push and it's most likely most like the majority of the players are going to be in B main. So even when those two players, when this, this team is committing to a push, those two players are going to just push out of short and most likely kill the killjoy while trading. So one is going to get deleted, but the other one will live. Advantage towards defenders in this case. 
because the other parts of the team are going into a stack. That's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to touch on, I think, defaulting and how to properly default in ranked. I'm not going to talk about pro level because it's a little bit different, but how to probably default in ranked. And I think this will fall exactly in what we need to understand as well after you understand micro objectives as well like this. So thank you for watching. Thank you for learning. If you guys have any topics that we'd like to discuss in the future, leave it, as a, leave it in the comment uh, and we'll try to explain whatever is there that you try to learn while playing Valorant. See you guys around. Till next time. Explosions. Stop the recording! <laughs>